Um, before, before Donald Trump blows up the relief package, Mike Pence is in Georgia rallying support for the Georgia runoffs, which are happening in now uh, 11 days, uh, 12 days, June, uh, January 5th. And uh, there's two things to note here. One is the, um, the Republicans in Georgia who are going to this rally with uh, Mike Pence, and this is at a TPUSA conference. This is the Charlie Kirk organization ostensibly to, to uh, corrupt the minds of, uh, of uh, college students. And uh, he is there ostensibly to get people to vote in the election, but they, are, they care about one thing and one thing only, and that is Donald Trump's election. And he moves past that. And really, um, this is one of those moments where it's uh, it, it would be a gaffe if it wasn't for the fact that it, it, it really was just an expression of what their uh, their attitude is. Here is Mike Pence at that rally. I don't think I have to tell you this, so for all we've done, for all we have yet to do, stay in the fight. Stay in the fight in our election. Stay in the fight in Georgia's election. And stay in the fight every day that follows. That's not what I meant. Stay in the fight. All the fight. fight. To be a check on what the Democrats and the radical left want to do and what they want to undo. All that we've done. You know, our agenda. (laughs) That's not exactly stop the steal, is it? Their agenda is about American decline. Where we cut taxes, roll back regulation, and advance freedom, their agenda is higher taxes, open borders, socialized medicine, a Green New Deal, and abortion on demand. (laughs) They want to make rich people poorer and poor people more comfortable. Wait, what? (laughs) Hold on. That's it. Hey, man. There you go. You stumbled on the truth. My amendment to your statement would be that progressives want to do that. Uh, Democrats want to tweak along those margins. But I love him just saying it. Yeah, like that. That is our agenda. Thank you for accurately describing it to Turning Points USA and the the audience. The horror. I know. Of in any way making American or any people, for that matter, more comfortable. Think of the horror. I mean, this is this this is part and parcel of the conservative ideology that has been shared by every Republican who has held office, the vast majority. And I include Paul Ryan into this. I mean, there's multiple examples that we used to talk about all the time about. And, and frankly, this is why Donald Trump won their uh, their primary, because the idea. The reason why to Mike Pence. The idea of making folks living in poverty more comfortable is so reprehensible is it does not hold them to account for their poverty because in their mind, their poverty, living in poverty is a sign of of some type of moral defect, some type of character defect as opposed to, and and frankly, we have uh, millions of people apparently who have that defect. This has been the conservative line for decades now, that if you do not have money, you are in some way morally less righteous than those who do, which is why Donald Trump was able to walk on a stage. And regardless of the fact that he had no policy um, expertise whatsoever, regardless of the fact that he had no government service expertise whatsoever, regardless of the fact that he his business was just a series of bankruptcies, and had he taken the three hundred million dollars that his dad uh, bequeathed him and just put it in an index fund, he would be richer than he is today. Because he was the richest person on that stage, there was no arguing with him because he wouldn't be, according to conservative ideology, that rich 
unless he was righteous, unless he was in the right, unless he knew. And so this is an extension of that same thing. And it is not in any way unique to Donald Trump. Mike Pence is a run of the mill, a little bit more theocratic, I think, than most Republicans, but but certainly not within this necessarily, this administration, uh, a run of the mill Koch brothers Republican, just like Paul Ryan was, uh, just like John Boehner was in many respects. I mean, this is the ideology they espouse. This is not unique to Trump in what in any way whatsoever. I mean, you're on point with this. Um I, it's a rarity, but uh, no, <laughs> I, I, I'm joking. Obviously, I agree with you. And the fact that um, Mike Pence is so theocratic and is so vocal about his religious beliefs, that's what makes this kind of penalization of poverty so extra egregious for me, because it, it should be the opposite. I mean, the the teachings of religion are about compassion for the poor and not just making things even more uncomfortable for them. He should, in theory, based on his beliefs, be in favor of making people's lives more comfortable. It's but, tough but, love. Right. It's tough love. But instead, his beliefs or his purported beliefs have become so intertwined with his authoritarianism that it's now indistinguishable. And the authoritarianism is mixed in with this worship of wealth, and that's reflected in policy. So it's one thing to just have these beliefs and say them as, like you're a drunk uncle at the bar or whatever, but... The fact of the matter is, is that a party that currently controls the Senate and the outgoing uh, president is a part of, they believe this and they reflect it in policy that hurts and affects millions and millions of people on a yearly basis. All right. And we're going to talk about this with um, with uh, Heather Parton.